Today we're going to learn how to use Google SketchUp to create interesting shapes. What we're going to do before using the offset tool, which will be our first tool to use, is I'm going to create a three-dimensional polygon. So I'm going to go ahead and take my polygon, the sides I have is five, I've looked on the bottom um, side channel, and again to use uh, the polygon I click, drag, and click again. To make it three-dimensional, I'm going to use the push-pull tool to um, bring it up. Now to use the offset tool, which is located right here, I'm going to um, be working with the top of my, my polygon. So I'm going to go ahead and orbit and zoom in so I can see this a little bit better. Now what the offset tool does is it creates a perfect frame um, in the shape of the side that I'm selecting. So with the offset tool, um, once I've selected a side, I'm hovering, so this will be the side I've selected, I'm going to click just to set the offset tool, and by moving my mouse left and right, or up and down, I'm changing the um, width of my frame. Once I like the width, I will click again. I can use the offset tool again, so click, move, click, and again. So you can do as many offsets as you want. And now this has a cool shape to it, but by combining the offset tool with the push-pull tool, I can now create a cool arena. I can create a fountain looking shape. Um, I can create a pool. Um, so a lot of things can be done using the offset tool. In addition, I can use the offset tool on the side of a form. So notice that it takes the rectangular side and I can then um, pull this out. So a lot of cool things that you can do with the offset tool. It's easier than just drawing another shape on the side of the form because again, it creates a perfect um, frame so that all of your edges are the same width. So that's using the offset tool. The next tool we're going to look at is the arc tool. So I'm going to create um, a rectangular prism on the floor. So I'll do two to show you different things to do with the arc tool. So I have two rectangular prisms by using the rectangle tool and the move tool. Now the arc tool is located at the top next to the polygon. And to use the arc tool, there are three clicks required. Now, just like the pencil tool or the line tool, you want to make sure that you are finding an edge. Okay, I can find a midpoint or an edge, but you want to make sure you're on the edge of the form. I'm going to click once to go ahead and set my um, arc. Now, there's two things. I can drag all the way across, find the edge. I'm going to click again to set the edge of the arc. And now my third click is going to determine how arcy I want my arc. So I can have an up arc, a down arc. So I'm gonna go ahead and create an up arc and I would require a third click to set it. Now I can then combine it with the push and pull tool to create a more interesting shape. Now the great thing about this is if I push all the way back until it says offset limit, if I release my mouse, it actually cuts away at that top, so I'm able to create more of kind of an arc look to this. So that's a really interesting way to create a roof or a shape. Now you may also combine arcs. So I can put several arcs on the side. So I wanna find a midpoint to, I can just go in the center, so it's another click third click. Now I want to finish my side and all I have to do is find the end point of the previous arc. I'm going to go all the way to the end, click again, and then I can determine if I want um, the arc to go up or down. And I'll click a third time. And again you want to combine with the push and pull tool. I can just go halfway. I can also completely take away the top to create a really interesting side. 
Um, in addition, you can combine line and arcs. So I can go ahead and create, use the straight line. I can then select my arc. Notice the red axis means that I'm straight across. So I can put an arc and then finish off with a straight line. So I have my shape. I can use the push and pull tool to push in or out my shape. And that's how to combine arcs or combine arcs with the lines. Now, soften edges is a great tool to use for soft items like a couch or a pillow. So I'm gonna go ahead and soften this form right here. I'm gonna move this in and create a different shape. So say I want just like a really pillowy bed shape. What you wanna do to soften the edges is you're gonna select the entire item to soften. So I'm going to triple click my form and soften edges is located in the window toolbar. And towards the bottom, it's called soften edges. So once I select, I did match photo, I'm going to select soften edges. And when I do that, what I will do is move the line and you can see what the different looks are and then what I've done is created a soft looking form so it looks like it's kind of it's not it doesn't have a hard edge it's more of like a pillow shape so that's what softened edges looks like. And again, that's just really good for a bed or a couch or something that would um, be soft and not have a hard edge. The next thing we're going to do is learn how to um, make a cone or a dome. So I'm gonna rotate around. And I'm gonna create two cylinders in the back. That was too big and make them three dimensional using the push pull tool um, to do the dome or I'll do a cone first it's a little bit easier we're gonna use the line tool and what you're gonna do is you're going to click on your endpoint to the center and now you're gonna click on the center and you want to create a line that goes straight up. In order to know that it's straight up, you need to make sure that it's on blue axes. Once you see that it's blue and it says on blue axes, click again. And you're lastly going to click from that endpoint to your starting point. If you do that correctly, your triangle wedge will fill in. So it's filled in and I've done that correctly. The next thing I'm going to do is use the follow me tool. The follow me tool is in the tools. So I'm gonna select follow me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just kind of click on the corner, the outside corner of the triangle. And I'm gonna hold that down, hold the mouse down and um, trace the perimeter of my circle. So I'm gonna click, drag. Notice that the perimeter is red and I'm going to trace all the way around all the way around. The follow me tool is reading the edges of my circle. And once I hit the beginning, I let go and it creates a cone. So I've created a cone. It's important to drag all the way along the perimeter of your form so that it reads the edges of your circle. So there's a cone. To create a dome, it's pretty similar. We're just going to combine it with the arc tool to create a more rounded top. So the first two steps are just like the cone. I'm going to find my endpoint to center and also the center straight up along the blue axes. 
Now instead of using the line tool to create a straight line, I'm going to use the arc tool. Now when using the arc tool, it's important to start at the top of that line. So I'm going to click. Remember, arcs require three clicks. I'm going to do my second click on the bottom edge. Now before I do my third click, I want to wait until I see the little blue dots that are right under my pencil. If I don't have the blue dots, it will not fill in and I'm creating a crooked um, pie shape. So I want to move around and once I have those little blue dots under it, I then click and then it will fill in. Again, if this uh, shape does not fill in, you just need to do that last step again and wait for those little blue dots which showed up underneath my pencil. Now the last step is exactly like the cone. I'm going to use the follow me tool, click on the bottom corner, click and hold, and I'm going to trace along the perimeter of my red circle all the way around, all the way around. Once I hit the beginning, I will then let go and I created more of a soft dome shape. And then the last thing we're going to show you today is our scale tool to make things bigger or smaller. So I'm going to make a copy of my dome. So triple click and option select over. And if I wanted to make this shape bigger, I'm going to use the scale tool. The scale tool is right here. Once you select it, you can um, use the corner to do a uniform scale, bigger or smaller. If you grab the center, it'll stretch it. So now it's a little bit different form than you had before. And you can modify the size and the shape using the scale tool.